Well, Andrea Williams is Chief Executive of Christian Concern, and Matthew Shoemimo is from the Cystic Fibrosis Trust. Welcome to you both this evening. Andrew, if I can come to you first. This is about saving lives, isn't it? And if this move means that there are more organs donated, surely it has to be a positive step forward. We are all about saving lives. We have to be. Um, we have to be certainly in our laws, and we have to be about best medicine, but also about best practice. And of course we should be encouraging people to voluntarily uh, donate organs. That can't be a, a bad policy. But to presume that somebody uh, will give their organs at the point of death is a step too far. Proper safeguards can't be put in. It becomes involuntary, not voluntary. It no longer is a gift, but rather something that is coerced. And bodily integrity is absolutely vital, very vital even in death. We're much more than the sum of our parts. We can't commodify our, our body. Matthew, what do you say to that, that you're taking away the rights of people to gift their organs to somebody else? Well, the Cystic Vibrosis Trust would highlight the fact that one in three people with cystic fibrosis at the moment who are deemed eligible for a lung transplant are actually dying on the waiting list. So that's the context for this legislation, the urgency of part of the solution being part of it to increase the number of usable organs that are available for donation. And we believe that Welsh legislation does actually strike the right balance between giving people the chance to object to their organ being used, whilst at the same time providing a powerful new impetus for organ donation. And when we've seen this policy and practice in other countries like Belgium, we have seen big increases in, in organ transplantation as a consequence, and we haven't seen a fall off of people as a consequence of people objecting to the use of their organs. And Andrea, they have said that people will have the option. If they don't want to donate their organs, they don't have to. Is that not enough? Currently, they have the option to donate their organs, and that's what we should be pushing in terms of legislation. Otherwise, we're coercing people, and actually what could happen uh, without proper safeguards is um, Essentially, the harvesting of organs, pressure for, for organ donations to, to occur. Of course we want to see an end to cystic fibrosis. Of course we want to see the somatic cell growth and actually Im improvements in that whole area. Of course we want to see those things. But we must be very careful of what we do in terms of respecting a person's body, their intentions, and something that is actually a whole expression of a person. We are much more than the sum of our parts. And we must be very careful uh, before we begin to introduce uh, legislation that essentially takes a utilitarian view um, of the bodily organs, even if it is for very good purpose. We accept that it's for a very good purpose. We want to see many people with cystic fibrosis, that we want to see their lives saved. But there are other, there are other ways to do this. Matthew, what would you say to that? I mean, you imagine that uh, you've lost a, a member of your family and you're then faced with this decision. You weren't aware whether your relative wanted to donate or not. Surely you're putting even more stress on a bereaved family's shoulders. I would entirely respect and understand um, Andrea's position and the sort of the emotional, the tremendous emotional um, factors there are in this. But we would stress that in, in the context of the Welsh legislation, there's a two-year period before this policy would be introduced, and that provides time and space for families in Wales to talk, to consider, to reflect on whether or not individuals do wish to object, and crucially, to think for the wishes of individuals to communi be communicated to family members, so on the death of the person, even if the person hasn't registered their objection, those concerns can actually be conveyed to the medical authorities. So we feel that the safeguards are there and that we are respecting individuals' rights. Okay, Andrew. Um, uh, Andrea and Matthew, many thanks for your thoughts this evening. We await to see the result of the vote a little later.